What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 21 of our athlete interview series presented by USANA. I'm your host, Jason Nacy, and on today's episode, I'll be chatting with USANA's own Austin No Doubt Trout. He's held the WBA regular light middleweight title from 2011 to 2013 and has fought some of the best boxers in the world. What's up, Austin? Welcome to the show. Jason, what's happening, bro? <laughs> it's good to good to see you. It's been it's been a long time. I think uh, last time I saw you was convention 2019. So it was at man, the end man. of August. That's too long, man. I hope you guys are doing good. How's you and the family? Doing doing amazing. How are you guys doing? You you moved to Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I'm out here in Houston training right now. So, do you like it in Houston? I mean, I, I love I, it. Yeah, people pretty cool. Uh, yeah, man, I, I mean, I've trained out here since I was a teenager. I've okay. had a lot of camps out here. So, and my manager, uh, Box Spagnola, he's from out here. So, you know, I've had I've had some good business connections and some some friends out here. Um, the work, there's plenty of talent in every gym. You know, we spar yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have multiple gyms coming to our gym to, to you know just get that work. So, uh, I'm I'm getting sharp every day, even before you know camp starts. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, dude, you look fantastic. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm liking the new style, dude. I don't think I've seen you, you know, since you took it all off. Yeah. You know, um, God really made me do it. You know? <laughs> okay. okay. I, I had to get ahead of it. You know, I was losing the hair and I was like, you know what, before they can notice, let me just go ahead and take it off and let this be the new. Somebody told me I look like the, uh, the pretty, the pretty version of Squidward. That was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't see that, man. I don't see that. Um, it's the book shit, I think. There you yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, no, man, it's a great look. It, uh, yeah. I mean, there's you've you've got a great shaped head for that. So uh, yeah, it worked, it worked out great. I'm I'm jealous of your your hairline and, and head of hair, but you know, what I mean, at least I got I could do it. Yeah. You might not look as good as me, ball. So Oh, I know for a fact I wouldn't. And, <laughs> and 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 sometimes look, I know people who don't, you know, who don't shave are um jealous of the people who have to and b- vice versa. But yeah. there's gotta be something uh from getting out of a pool or just waking up and and it's just go. yeah. Just go. <laughs> and and probably yeah. pretty cool too, I bet. Yeah, in this hot, humid Houston weather, it does uh, give a good draft. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of drafts, one thing that we need to do that we didn't get to do this year um, is go. Well, it has nothing to do with drafting, but I was thinking you might you might be a little colder, and that's hit the slopes, oh. man. It's and that's oh, been man. way too long since we hit the slopes together. You're not lying, man. We gotta hit a Park City. I love to. It, is I don't know what the weather's like, but I don't think there's much chance for any springboarding. No, uh, ev- all dried up. Everything's closed right now, except yeah. for except for Snowbird. Um, right. Yeah, and and they they're able to keep that open because I guess the other ski resorts lease the mm-hmm. land from mm-hmm. the Forest Service, and mm-hmm. for insurance purposes and liability, they make them close on a set day every year. Doesn't matter every if they, yeah, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred inch base, they uh-huh. still have to close. So, but, uh, uh, Hey, let's jump into this. We had a bunch of awesome questions, um, right. from, from people following the, uh, USANA athletes page on Instagram. And some of them are questions, you know, we get to quite a bit, but on, on yours, there's a lot of great, fight questions that I'm, that I'm really excited to get to that. Um, I don't think I would have thought of asking you if it wasn't for, for, for these people chiming in. So appreciate everybody uh, who threw in questions, but uh, let's get started. The first one, this is an easy one. What's your favorite USANA product? Sports pack, uh, the vitamins. I, and I say that my favorite, cause I use those you know, twice a day, daily, yeah. you know, and I, and I make my, my family use them. And honestly, I, 
Nah, I'm not even gonna make any claims. Can't make no claims. <laughs> yeah, just, no claims. I don't get sick. I'll just say I don't get sick. Nice. And I haven't gotten sick in a long time. Nice. And um, that's that. You know, so the sports pack is probably is definitely my favorite. But I mean, I love a lot of different products. You know, like yeah. the one the product I get the most excited about when I get it comes in my box is the the facial stuff. You yeah. Know, the you know, hey. My skin, I mean. There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice. I, I got to be honest too. Like I'm really, I hadn't tried the Cell Aviv. It had been out for a handful of months, but yeah. I was with a couple athletes. And this athlete comes up to me and she's like, that skincare is amazing. Just went off the rails about it. And mm -hmm. I was like, really? So then I went. And I started using it. Yeah, I I like okay. it. It's a it's a lot better than I shouldn't say a lot better than I thought, but I just never used uh, the face yeah. stuff before. Better than the bar soap that I was using to wash my face. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Nice. Um, all right, here's the next. Here's the next one. Um, what inspired you to become an advocate for Parkinson's disease? Uh, that's a great question. I remember back in, I want to say 2005, uh, Floyd Mayweather fought Oscar De La Hoya. And Oscar De La Hoya's coach, Freddie Roach, yeah. he suffered or suffers from the Parkinson's disease. Um, and they were showing him waking up about 5 a.m. and he put on his own gloves. He starts hitting the bag and, and you know doing a little boxing workout. And he was saying that the disease would have swallowed him up much sooner but because he does these boxing workouts, it's helped subside it. Huh. Now there is no there is no uh, cure for Parkinson's disease yeah. yet, unfortunately. But they found out that well, just just a high intensity one of those hit training, you know, interval trainings yep. uh, helps with the Parkinson uh, disease. But boxing specifically. Because of the four-way coordination, because of, of the hand-eye coordination, the feet-hand and the feet-eye coordination, it helps rebuild some neurological pathways that the disease cuts off. Wow. Now, you know, once that pathway is, 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 is cut off, there's really no uh, bringing it back. But the boxing helps the brain make a new pathway around yeah. to get the connection. Huh. So, so a lot of times the symptoms, not only do they... Do, do they not progress as fast, but they also subside. Uh, you even get, you know, I have some, some uh, fighters, I like to call them fighters. I have yeah. some fighters that tell me, um, you know, this is my 15th year with Parkinson's. And this last year was better than my first year with the Parkinson's. Wow. The last year of just doing the boxing training and, and, uh, and whatnot, he says, you know, he was able to ride a bike again, something that it shakes kind of stopped him from doing, yep. you know, just kind of regained control. So when I heard that that helped, I was like, look, I know boxing. Yeah. You know, I don't know all about the Parkinson's, but I can learn, but I can offer, I'd love to offer my services to, you know, what, if, to me, it's like the best way that I'm able to help with what I've been doing my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. An easy way to give back. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and the, the things I've learned about the, the Parkinson's disease and how boxing helps, I would love to to expand the boxing training for dementia, because um, hmm. I, I think it could help. You know, of course, I would need their own caretakers to come with me, but even Alzheimer's, you know, those boxing could help with those things too. I just don't have a certification for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is there a certification to help with? boxing and Parkinson's or using yes, boxing um, rock steady boxing. You, know, you get certified, you know, in their little training and then you can, yeah. you can open up, you know, a franchise, so to speak. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I honestly would have, would have never thought to ask that question. So. Right. Right. And most people think boxing causes Parkinson's because yeah. the most famous fighter alive, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. He ended up suffering and dying from Parkinson's. So that's that's the stigma that gets associated. But in, in reality, uh, boxing helps, well, not cure. Yeah. It helps treat. Subside it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then also you have, you have Muhammad 
Ali, but but Freddie Roach as well, which probably mm-hmm. adds to a little bit of that uh, He's probably boxing the most famous stigmatism. Boxing trainer, yeah, you know. So you're right, you're right. Um, but it it is awesome and seeing just the progression from from our fighters, even from week one to week two. It's it's, it's awesome. Nice. All right. So this person says you've been getting better every fight. Have you changed your style? Um. Thank you. I appreciate you. You've been watching it, and I feel that the progression is there. And honestly, the style hasn't changed, but my my discipline in between fights has. I, I've stayed in the gym, and then you know, all COVID aside, for that for the beginning of COVID, I want to say it was like eight months because New Mexico, if you know, New Mexico is very strict. They shut everything down, shut the gyms down, really? shut the restaurants down for, you know, strict for a good six months. And then, you know, opened up, shut them back down for another two months. And uh, for the better part of the whole year, the rest was shut down. Wow. And I didn't get to get in the gym for that whole time. I didn't hit. I, I was telling my wife, I was like, look, I need to hit something. And I also need something to hit me. You want to put on some gloves? I won't hit you, but I'll let you hit me and I'll just punch the wall or something, you know? Yeah. Um, it was, it was rough. And I, I told myself never take going into the gym for granted. So once, you know, things kind of opened up, I just been in the gym trying to, you know, not just stay in shape, but to, to just perfect the craft. Yeah. Um, so when it's time for camp, you know, we're going to start on weight sharp. All we have to do is just, you know, up the, the intensity to, to give me a better shape. So uh, I think the discipline in between. And also, I you know I stopped eating meat for the, probably the last four years, and I think that's helped. Not only uh, not four years, last two years, and I think that's also helped with just my my recovery, my mood, my endurance, yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of different stuff. Yeah, um, I I used to talk with Timothy Bradley back yeah. back in the day, and he said that he always went vegan. Um, months before a fight mm-hmm. so and, and, yes, and that was so interesting to me and i, and I remember I, I was asking tim i was it was at the convention too yeah you know i was like so do you are you vegan or do you just do it before he says i do it months before the fight and it helps him you know clean out yep. all the things that he was eating yep. wrong and, and uh he says he just has you know such an, a, a crazy amount of energy for his yeah. camp and i was like oh that's interesting i'm not quite vegan uh you know i'm, I'm gonna forever like eggs and honey yep, yep. For, i should say never say forever but yep for sure honey you prefer yeah <laughs> get over the eggs for sure honey yeah uh, but but i'm getting closer and closer you know starting to eat some raw stuff which which sucks yeah it's not it's not it's, it's gross but i feel good yeah you know? well yeah and i i think that's the biggest problem um is so much uh, so, so much of the food that we eat now is processed loaded with salt and sugar that it's really tasted i mean it's changed our taste so much that yeah. trying to eat raw vegan is really tough for people because it 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 doesn't taste great you've actually got to get you've you've got to get out of you know wanting that sugar and 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 you know, the more sugar you eat, the, the the harder it is to you know even eat celery, celery or carrots because they're not loaded with the with the sugar. You know, yeah. So they they say, and I, and I don't know, I couldn't tell you if it's true or not, but they say that quitting sugar is harder than quitting cocaine. Yeah, and and all I know is. By day, I want to say day seven of no sugar, I was like, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need some, I need, can, let me chew on the cough drop. I'll take that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, you do feel the withdrawals. And, you know, they say cheese is another one that's very hard to, to quit. And I haven't I haven't tried quitting cheese yet. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah it's on the list you know i can't do sugar and cheese you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um one thing i gotta say though i i i wasn't vegan because mm-hmm. i would uh i'd eat like 
crab meat every once in a while or sometimes fish, but I, I don't really like fish very much. Yeah. So I wouldn't eat a lot. Um, but I cut out milk, um, cheese for the most part. Uh, yeah. not now this was, this was like six years ago and yogurt. And I still haven't gotten back into yogurt or milk. Right. Yeah. But, uh, this was when I was training for a full iron man and okay. I, uh, I would go out on a Saturday because Saturday and Sundays were always my big days, right? Because I, I could put in the biggest workout, right? <clears throat> but I'd go run six to 10 miles on a Saturday. And then I'd wake up the next, the next morning and ride yeah. like 60 to 80 miles on my bike. And I Dang. felt amazing. And this is yeah. what Even I... After all Molly's. Yeah, yeah, because I think, uh, you know, I, I've been told that dairy is a big inflammatory. So if, if you're yeah. if, if you're full of inflammation, you can't recover as fast, mm. right? So, um, but, but what's crazy about that and what I don't understand is a lot of us go through these phases where we make these remarkable changes, right? Whether it's diet or whatever. And then uh, I did that for three years and I felt amazing. Yep. And then mm -hmm. one day I had a craving for meat and I was like, okay, maybe my body needs meat. So mm -hmm. then I, then I ate the meat and then slowly, you know, it all, it all came crumbling down. <laughs> you know, I felt, I fell off the wagon, the wagon backed up on over me. Yeah. And like, I mean, you know, and it's, and, it, and it's crazy looking back. Cause it's just like, I know I felt so good you know doing me. that. Yeah. Why, why is it so hard to get back to that point? You know, because we feel like we're missing out on the donuts and you know, the yeah. candy bars and whatever. And yeah. so you're right. It's like an addiction. It, it is. Food is an addiction. And, you know, they say if you can master your diet, that's the first step of mastering yourself. Yeah. Mastering what you put in you. And when I and I heard that, you know, a few years ago, I was like, oh, OK. Let me start taking steps to, to master that, because I do want to be a master of myself and yeah. nothing else. And but I, the, back to the like the slippery slope of, you know, you, you had a craving, so you ate it and, and then it just kind of kept falling. I think it's because. We have to be able to shift our priorities when it comes to food, right? The first priority needs to be nutrition. And when I think that's where you 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 had that priority of nutrition yeah. was the first priority. And then it goes taste and then convenience. You know, and, and uh, I think right now we're even we you know, we even give up the taste for the convenience because microwave anything is trash. Yeah. As, yeah. a, as opposed to like, put the pizza in the microwave to eat it, that sucks. But put the pizza in the oven to eat it, that's so much better. Yep. But the convenience of the microwave is is 30 seconds as opposed to warming up the oven yep. Yep. for like two, three minutes and then taking it out. You know, so I think we even give up taste for convenience, where convenience is first, taste is second, and then nutrition is last. Yeah. Uh, but we gotta, you know, we gotta flip that. Nutrition first, taste second, convenience last. So I look at the change of the diet as independence, right? Yep. Yeah. I, and you know, eventually I'm going to learn how to grow my own food. Yeah. Because uh, that's next on the list. You know, I, I have my own tomatoes and, and they were just way better than store-bought tomatoes. Right? So red, so so tasty. I was like, I've never tasted a tomato before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's night and day. It's crazy. Yeah. I, and I, and I heard a quote that I love. It's that, uh, that you should eat to live, not live to eat. That's right. That's right. If you, you know, all sicknesses, most sicknesses, even mental sicknesses start in the gut. Yeah. So if we learn the right combinations of what certain ingredients can help fix these sicknesses, um, you know, Big Pharma wouldn't be around. Yeah. We wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. So I, I love the holistic doctors, you know, that really doing their homework. Uh, the real alchemists, which which is, uh, you know, the herbs and spice. Yep, yep. Doc, that's my guy. That's that's who I want to see. Yep. Before I go see a doctor. A hundred percent. That's awesome. 
Um, let's jump into the next question here. Uh, this is another great one. What are you looking forward to most this year? Uh, uh, <laughs> July 10th. I got a fight in Dubai. That's that's probably the the most the biggest thing I got for me right now. Now I got this multi fight deal while I'll be in Dubai three times this year, but the first wow. one is already up. I'm looking forward to this first one. So, you know, I got to get a USANA patch because, you know, we got to go ahead and break into Dubai. There we go. There we go. That's yeah. that's funny you say that uh, about your fight in Dubai because that, uh, that was actually leading into the next question is when is your next yeah. fight and who is it? Do you know who it is? Uh, Alejandro Davila, but I don't know if the contract signed yet. Um, that's that's the front runner right now. Uh, and just a little call out, Sergio Martinez. We were supposed to get it in over there, bro. <laughs> I thought I thought you wanted to come on and get this work in, in paradise. It's okay. <laughs> Hopefully, I see you there and we can set something up because I'll be there three times this year. Nice. Get nice. the smoke. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Have you been to Dubai before? Never. This will be my first time, so, so I'm very excited. Now I, I want to go to Egypt, which I, I know is right next door. Yeah. Uh, and go see what I can see. That that. That'd be really cool. Um, I, I've never been to the Middle East. Yeah. I, the closest I've been to the Middle East, I would say, is, is Azerbaijan. Right next to Iran on the, the Dead Sea. Yeah. So that's that's the closest I've been. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful architecture. Um, that's about it. Everything yeah. Was, yeah. It was pretty. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> no shade to anybody from Azerbaijan, but you know what your country is like. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Here's another good one. Who was your toughest opponent to date? To date, the toughest opponent. You know, there's categories. So yeah. the toughest opponent to date would be Jared Hurd. Jared Hurd is definitely the toughest opponent to date. I literally, for six rounds, beat the brakes off of this man. <laughs> you know, and and I punched him until I couldn't punch no more. And, you know, he was like, okay, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, and that was kind of his strategy. You just take a, take a, a vicious butt whooping until, the, you know, the, the guy was done with him. Yeah. And he just, you know, dished out his own. So he was for sure the toughest uh, opponent I've had. The the most skilled opponent I've ever faced was Erislandi Lara, um, the Cuban. And then probably the most famous person I ever faced was Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, Canelo. I remember that fight. My uh, was good my, my dad still talks about that. Um, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's watched it a handful of times. And, uh, and really feels like it could have could have gone the other could have gone the other way but you know that's neither here nor there right it's yeah yeah that's that's what that's what's tough about about your sport i you know i was i was having this conversation with um one of our skiers as well free skiers that does half pipe and it's like yeah. when you've got judges I mean, that's, that's kind of subjective. It's not objective, right? Like that's right. if you're running a race, it's the first person to cross the lines. There's no if, ands or buts. It's that's the way it is. But you know, if somebody sees something a little bit different, a trick a little bit different or whatever, I mean that, you know, subjective. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just a battle of opinions. Yeah. Yeah. And some people are better salesmen than they are fighters. Yeah. Yeah. So they give rounds, you know, selling, selling, whatever it is. But yeah, I, I, I don't know how to solve that one though. I just have to, just gonna have to start knocking these cats out. There you go. That's objective. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, here's another good one. What do you, what do you do to stay in the right path as a fighter? Um. Again, it's um. Here, here's one way because there's there's times especially yeah. when I don't have to fight that I, I get let's just say for, for lack of better words lazy yeah. right I feel like doing nothing I don't want to go to the gym for what why 
Yeah. I don't have a fight. You know, there's no reason I need to be in shape at this moment. I, you know, I look at it like wear and tear on the body. But I also know, even if I don't have nothing going on as far as the fight goes, and I don't get into the gym, it really doesn't matter what I did that day. The day is not as productive as, as I like. And I could have ran all the errands in the world for my wife and could have built her a freaking gazebo. Yeah. You know, if I didn't get a run in or didn't get it and worked at the gym, I feel like the day was kind of wasted. And now, and I kind of put my mindset to stop wasting days. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I have a, a little a daily, and I call it a daily, and I write in the things I want to get done in the day and workouts on, you know, say my prayers. I'm very spiritual, is on there. Um, bond with the family. Uh, you know, I put that on there. And if I could just get those things done daily, then, then uh, you know, you add up enough days and you got a good week, add enough weeks, good month, enough months, a good life. You yeah. know, productive. Yeah. Besides, you know, one step at a time. Like I'll make this step being a productive step. So that ties into one of the, one of the questions I like to ask every athlete when we do this is what's one thing you do daily that, uh, that helps you to either be a better person or a better athlete. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, would you say that's yours? That's one of them, but the one that I, sometimes I miss days on the journal, you know, the one thing that I do daily without fail is in the morning, and then you call it prayer, you call it meditation. And it's even before I even open my eyes. I start going over all the blessings. I go, well, I'm alive, so that's one. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I, thank, I thank the Most High for all the, the businesses that I have that I've partake. I thank the Most High for the, the potential businesses that I want to have. You know, I just thank yep. him for already. Like, you know what? Thank you, because I want it. I'm going to have it. So thank you in advance. Yeah. And I just become real. I started to have real gracious off the things I have and I become real gracious off the things I want. And then, uh, then I do like some self-reflection, like what, what did I do yesterday? I could do better today, you know? And, uh, for me who loves me, I can't usually answer that question. I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of great daily, Yeah, but I'd be better. So, you know, I have to think <laughs> of that. But... <laughs> nice. That's a good one. I like that. Um, look, We've been, we've been chatting away for 30 minutes now. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but there was one last question I thought was, was, was really, really good. Um, mm-hmm. And they said, who do you think is the top fighter in the game right now? Yeah, man, it's, it's definitely Canelo, Canelo Alvarez. Uh, he, he's, he's the top dog. He put in the work. He's, he's up there. I like to see um, where Teofimo Lopez takes it. He's 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 definitely an up and coming superstar. Uh, David Devin Haley Haney, I don't know why I messed. Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, that's there's the future. But don't sleep on your boy Austin Trout. <laughs> Coming right back to the top. Oh yeah, there's plenty of names that I know for a fact I can whoop they believe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and and uh, and in all. With with all the humility I can I can muster up to say this, I definitely feel like I still am one of the best. Yeah, especially according to who they say is the best. Yeah, you know, what I mean? according to them, oh, I'm in that I'm in that category. Now there's these up and coming cats that truly are, in my opinion, are the best, but ain't nobody talking about them right now. So we're just gonna let them get their time to shine when people are talking about them. Yep. Yeah. Well, I got to say my dad is, is a student of boxing. He, he boxed when he was younger. He, yeah, right. he, he watches all, you know, he, he gets all the pay-per-views and, yeah. and, and, and he said, he thinks you're one of the best fighters. He loves your style. Yeah. And he thinks you're, you're, you're unbelievable and, and, and probably got, uh, Probably got ripped off a, a handful of times in your career, but uh, yeah. you know, I guess that's all part of it and just trying to take the highs with the lows, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I still love the game because it's been good to me. So it's been bad to me too, but, you know, more good than bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think you'll be in Dubai in December for one of your – Actually, that's one of the one of the fights is scheduled for the end of December. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll have to actually no, not in uh, mid mid December to early December. Yeah. Cool. 
Well, once it's all figured out, let me know because I think I'll be heading out there um, for for a Spartan race. They have their world championships, I think, in, in Dubai in December. I got to look. They, they have the date specified, but I can't remember right. if it was like December 13th or whatever. Be after about two weeks before the fight because I want to get acclimated. So I'm yeah. sure we'll get to run into each other. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah. It's well, happening. I'll, I'll keep you posted and uh, sure. I'll uh, hopefully be able to make it work and, and, and watch one of your fights. It'd be awesome. Cause it's one yeah, thing that, that I haven't been able to do yet. Um, <laughs> there's always just something that that's happened, but, uh, but yeah, that's on my bucket list is to come you gotta watch you fight. fight yeah. You got to catch a lot, man. It's, it's way better than, than on TV, yeah. like hockey. You know yeah. what I mean? It's any sports. Those, yeah. Any sport, seriously. But, I feel like hockey, especially, like I will watch the heck out of a hockey game invested yeah. a lot. Yeah. You won't catch me turning to it on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my wife's the same way. She'll, she'll go to any sporting thing yeah. live, but she doesn't, she'll never watch she'll sports watch on, TV. on TV. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So. That's cool. Hey, well, I really appreciate you taking the time, Austin. It's always no, great catching up with you. Um, you're one of my favorite people. We've, I feel like we've got a, a, a lot of great history and uh, sure. a lot more to make too. Oh Dubai, yeah. 2021. There we go. go. There we go. We got the indoor snowboarding. So we can still catch the slopes out there. Done man. Year I, round, year I, round. I mean, how crazy would that be if we're able to connect in Dubai, like of, of yeah. all places, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm claiming it now. It's going to happen. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, tell your family. I said, hi, you've got a, I you've got a beautiful family. And, uh, and your wife, I've met her a handful of times. She's just, she's always been grace, graceful of your time whenever we've needed to steal you away. So, uh, yeah, appreciate, appreciate, appreciate you, your family, and, uh, just wish, wish the best for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Have a good one. Give everybody my love. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.